University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Oxford plays Cambridge tonight in the last of the first round matches. Thirteen teams are already through to the next stage and tonight's winners will join them. By the end of this match, we'll also know the four teams who'll return to compete in the losers' playoffs. And to be among them, the losing team tonight needs to score more than 155. Merton College Oxford last won this competition in 1980. It was founded in 1264 by Walter de Merton, then Chancellor of England as well as being Bishop of Rochester. J.R.R. Tolkien was Professor of English there. Thomas Bodley, founder of the Bodleian Library, was a fellow and T.S. Eliot was one of its scholarship students. One of its hallowed traditions is the time ceremony, which takes place annually when the clocks go back. Students walk backwards around the fellow's quad while drinking port, because doing so apparently preserves the fabric of the space-time continuum. And if they don't do it, we'd all be done for. So with the thanks of a grateful planet ringing in their ears, let's ask the team, who have an average age of 20, to introduce themselves. Hi, my name's Tim. I'm from Aberdeen, and I'm studying PPE. Hi, I'm Verity Parkinson from Seaford in Sussex and I'm reading English. I'm their captain. I'm Thomas Hudson. I'm from Bromley in South East London and I'm reading Mathematics. Hi, I'm Kendra Al-Hirani. I'm from Birmingham and I'm reading Medicine. St John's College, Cambridge was founded in 1511 by Lady Margaret Beaufort, mother of King Henry VII when she transformed the ancient hospital of St John the Evangelist into a college for students in the liberal arts and theology. It now has nearly 900 students and on a per capita basis it's reckoned to be the richest college in Cambridge. A long list of distinguished alumni includes the poets Wordsworth and Herrick, the abolitionist William Wilberforce, the physicist Paul Dirac and the actor Derek Jacobi. Tonight's team have an average age of 24. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Elliot bennett Sprague. I'm from West London and I'm reading Mathematics. Hi, I'm Caroline Tex. I'm from Taunton in Somerset and I'm reading English. I'm their captain. Hello, I'm James Orr. I'm from London and I'm studying Philosophical Theology. Hello, my name is Mark Wilson. I'm from the city of Port Colborne in Ontario in Canada and I'm studying towards a PhD in Physics. Well, the rules are the same as ever, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first start of a 10. Answer as soon as you buzz. From the declaration of war in September 1939 to the surrender of Japan in August 1945, how many men were Prime Minister of the UK? St John's Wilson. Two. Anyone like to buzz from Merton? Merton Hudson. Three. Three is correct. Yes, there was an election, of course, which brought in Clement Attlee. So, Merton College, you get the first set of bonuses. They're on the European Union. In each case, give the year in which the following took place. Firstly, under the Conservative government of Edward Heath, the UK joined the European Economic Community on January the 1st of which year? 1983. 1983 is 1973. Paving the way for the creation of the European Union, the Maastricht Treaty was signed in which year, which also saw Britain forced out of the exchange rate mechanism? 92, 1992. Correct. Twelve member states introduced euro coins and banknotes as their official currency on January the 1st of which year? 2002. Correct. Another start of question. Now marked by a battlefield heritage centre, which site near Sutton Cheney in Leicestershire saw Richard III fall in battle against an army commanded by Henry Tudor? St John's or Bosworth. Bosworth is right, yes. Your first bonus is St. John's are on a U.S. state. Which present-day western state of the U.S. saw the development of a number of boom towns following the discovery of the Comstock Lode silver deposit in 1859? Nevada. 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 Correct. Derived from the Washoe Indian word meaning big water, which large freshwater lake occupies a fault basin on the California-Nevada border? Good guess. Lake Tahoe? Correct. Calling itself the biggest little city in the world, which Nevada settlement became synonymous from the 1930s onwards with easily obtainable divorces? Reno. Reno. 
Reno. Reno's correct. Another starter question. One joule, or the work done by a force of one newton acting over a distance of one meter, is equal to 10 million of what CGS unit defined? St. John's Wilson. What is a microjoule? No, you lose five points. A what, a what CGS unit defined as the work done by a force of one dyne acting through a distance of one centimetre? Merton Hudson. An electron volt? No, it's an erg. Ten points for this starter question. Answer as soon as you buzz. What is the highest ordinal number to appear in the title of a play by Shakespeare? Merton Coleman. Twelve. Twelve is correct, yes. As in Twelfth Night. Your bonuses this time are on French kings and their mistresses, Merton. Madame de Maintenon, widow of the poet Paul Scarron, secretly married which king a few months after the death of his queen, an ardent Catholic, she is said to have influenced the revocation of the Edict of Nantes? No, sorry. It's Louis XIV. Diane de Poitiers was a mistress of which French king, almost 20 years her junior, noted for her political acumen, she was an influence behind his marriage to Catherine de Medici in 1533. Don't know. It's Henri II. And thirdly, for 20 years a major influence on state policy and blamed by many for French military defeats, Madame de Pompadour was a mistress of which king? Louis XV. Louis XV is right. A picture round now. Your picture starter is an atypical representation of the London Underground drawn to scale. Ten points if you can identify the station highlighted. Merton Parkinson. Victoria. Anyone like to bust from St John's? St John's or? Is it, um... No, sorry. Warren you, Street? Uh, uh, no, it's not Warren Street. And please, next time you buzz, you must answer straight away. It's Oxford Circus. So picture bonuses in a moment or two. Another starter question now. In 1934, Diego Rivera's mural for the Rockefeller Centre in Manhattan, entitled Man at the Crossroads, Looking with Hope and High Vision to the Choosing of a New and Better Future, was destroyed after the artist refused to remove the portrait of which political figure from the painting? Merton Coleman. Stalin. No, anyone? St. John's, you may not confer one of you may buzz. St. John's Wilson. Mussolini. No, it's Lenin. Another starter question. Examples in English being indicative, subjunctive and imperative. What grammatical term indicates... St. John's Wilson. Mood. Mood is right, yes. So, following on from that tube map drawn to a geographically accurate scale, for your picture bonuses you'll see the same map showing the central part of the London Underground. Five points if you can identify any of the major interchanges highlighted. Firstly, A. That's one of them, isn't it? Just look at the That's one of them in city there in blue. Waterloo. Waterloo is correct. Secondly, B. Liverpool Street? Liverpool Street. Correct. And finally, C. Or is it Paddington? Edgware Road. Edgware Road. No, it's Paddington. Ten points for this. Noted films of which American production company include the Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers series of musicals, as well as King Kong and Citizen Kane? It was bought by Howard Hughes in 1948, but ceased film production in 1953. Merton Coleman. MGM. No, St. John's. I'll tell you, it's RKO. Ten points for this. Listen carefully and answer as soon as you buzz. If a ball bounces onto a floor with an angle of incidence 45 degrees and off with a reflected angle of 60 degrees, what is the coefficient of restitution of the ball on the floor? I'm uh, waiting for you to work St. it out. St. John's Wilson. Route 2 over Route 3? Yes! I was waiting for you to work it out. <laughs> OK, St. John's, uh, your bonuses now are on locomotory structures of living cells. Firstly, for five points, what term is used for the long, slender structure which protrudes from the surface of some cells, producing thrust by rotation in bacteria and by a whiplash movement in eukaryotes? Yeah. 
flagellum. Correct. What term is used for the minute, fine, hair-like structures typically present in large numbers on the surface of some unicellular organisms, for example, paramecium? Cilia, is that the word? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nominate Wilson. Cilia. Cilia is correct. Meaning literally false foot. What term means the temporary outgrowth of the cell of some protozoa, for example, amoeba? Nominate Wilson. Pseudopodia. Correct. Another starter question. Rachel Johnson, sister of Boris, won the 2008 Literary Review Bad Sex in Fiction Award for her novel Shire Hell. Which US author won a Lifetime Achievement Award at the same ceremony after he received his third nomination on that occasion for The Widows of Eastwick? Merton Coleman. John Updike. Uh, John Updike is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses now, Merton, on cricket. Quote, once in my heyday of cricket, O oh day I shall ever recall, I captured that glorious wicket, the greatest, the grandest of all. These lines by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle describe his only first-class wicket taken in 1900. Who was his victim? W.G. Grace. Correct. Which future Prime Minister played first-class cricket for Middlesex, Oxford University and the MCC during the 1920s under the name Lord Dunglass? Bonar Law? No, it's Sir Alec Douglas Hume. Uh, and finally, having played for Dublin University in two matches against Northampton in the mid-1920s, who became the first cricketer from the first-class game to win a Nobel Prize, doing so for literature in 1969? Sam Beckett, I'm not sure. Samuel Correct. Another starter question now. From the Greek meaning prophetess, what name was given to those female seers through whom the gods were supposedly able to speak and foretell the future? Merton Parkinson. Oracles. No, I'm afraid you lose five points, such as those at the sites of Erythrae, Delphi and Cumae. St John's Bennett Sprague. Sybil. Sybil is right, yes. Your bonuses this time, St. John's, are on Shakespeare's Macbeth. In each case, give the words that complete these lines spoken by Lady Macbeth. Firstly, which three words complete these lines? Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full. With strength, with honour, Come on. With, uh, with courage. No, that's two words. Of direst cruelty. For five points, tell me this. Which four words complete these lines? Screw your courage to the sticking place. The, these are famous quotes. You either know them or you don't. Give us an answer. Uh, may, um, may it stay? And will not fail. And finally, which five words complete these lines? Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had... So much blood, but there are five, right? So much blood in him, in him, something like that? So much blood in him? Correct, yes. Thanks. Right, we're at uh, the stage of the music round now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music which appeared in a British film of 1996. For ten points, I want the name of the artist and the film it featured in. St John's Or. Iggy Pop, Train Spotting. Anyone like to? You can hear a little more, Merton, if you like. Merton Al Hurani. Is it Born Slippy and no, Underworld and Train Spotting? Yes, it is. Yes, well done. OK, you get the bonuses then. Uh, in 2007, Vanity Fair ranked the Trainspotting soundtrack as the seventh best motion picture soundtrack in history. Your bonuses are three more songs featured in that film. In each case, I simply want the name of the artist or band performing. Firstly, for five points.